Hey guys, welcome to Muscle River Podcast, episode number 246. This podcast is brought to you by the PMTT, the Pro Muskie Tournament Trail. Guys, if you ever want to fish a tournament, if you want to get started in tournaments fishing, there's still one more left. Next week, Lake Vermilion, the final leg of the tournament. Uh, go to promuskie.com and all the information is right there. Still got time to sign up. On the phone right now, I've got two gentlemen uh, that I've known for a combined 172 years. Um, I have Luke Ronestran, local Vermilion guide, ex lure maker, um, husband of the year. And I have Jim Stella, Mr. P. Got to make sure Kelsey is that. Mr. PMTT himself are on the line. Guys, how are we doing? Good. How are you? Good. I'm doing wonderful. I'm watching it rain after a wonderful day of sucking. Um, <laughs> it's somebody uh, didn't catch fish today. No, I caught one, but it's just it's so stupid. It should be better. I'm doing something wrong. Luke's trying Don't to tell me. Don't have a bonfire. Wrong. Luke's telling me what I'm doing wrong, and that's annoying me. Don't have a bonfire. I didn't tell you you were doing anything wrong. Well, I took it that way, so let's uh, let's agree to disagree. Um, that so- sounds familiar. No, shut yes. up. All right. <laughs> All right. PMTT, Lake Vermilion. Let's talk about it. Luke, you've been fishing there all year. You've been fishing there for... Many, many years, and you're unmedicated, which I don't see how that happened. Um, <laughs> how has Lake Vermilion been this year? Uh, it's been, honestly, it's really consistent. Um, we've had, I mean, I've caught muskies in a variety of ways. It seems like this year we've had some really good windows of uh, the classic topwater and, and bucktail bite. And then uh, we've obviously the... The lake is pretty famous now for its open water, this open water fishing. So we've got a, a bunch of fish that way. Um, yeah, I would say it's been a pretty, a pretty solid year. I mean, we catch fish most days we're out there. It's not like we're destroying them, but when we go out, we catch usually we catch one or two. Um, you get your your stunk days, but it's been good. We've got quite a few nice ones too. So I'm ex- I'm uh, definitely excited for the tournament next week. It'll be um, I, I I was up fishing by you this week for a few days, so uh, I wasn't on the lake. But my um, talked to one of my friends and guests tonight, and he said uh, there was a lot of people out there fishing. So you could tell uh, some guys are up there and getting ready for next week. Yeah, I think a lot of guys are coming up. Um, actually, be probably a lot of guys get there on Saturday. Um, I spoke to several guys that are going to make this like a week long trip um, with the tournament. So, yeah, it'll be good. I mean, we're getting there on Tuesday, so um, if you feel a cold gust of wind, it means I've arrived. Um, (laughs) What, uh, Luke, tell us, what's the water conditions right now on Vermilion? You got a a lot of water. You got a little bit of water. I'd say it's, I mean, it's average. um, Average for the lake level and then. Uh, the water temperature is kind of in that, like, if I remember right, it's like 72. If the sun's out all day, it gets up to, like, 76. Um, don't have a lot of algae. Like, uh, we don't get, like, a Lake of the Woods-style algae bloom on the lake, but we do get, a like, kind of a green stain to the middle and west end um, coming up here pretty quick. And that was just kind of starting to happen um, last week when I was up. Yeah. What? Uh, so your water temperatures are pretty hot. I mean, that's. I would say it's just normal, average for the time of the year. Mm-hmm. Are you getting this cool down right now? You think? Um. I. Uh, I mean, it was. I stopped. I dropped my boat off today. Um, up there, but it. It seemed like the. I don't know, it seemed like average weather for up there. I mean, we don't ever get like the. The crazy warm temperatures, you know, like the southern part of the state gets or the western part of the state gets. It's almost like we get the, more of that Canadian Shield type weather up there. So we don't get a lot of really, really hot days. I mean, I probably run my air conditioning in my, my trailer like maybe 10, 10 days a year or something like that. 
Yeah, it's been, uh, you know, I mean, we're we're cooling down right now. Guys, if you hear that pecking, it's me on my phone trying to find what the uh, weather forecast for. Where should I look? Tower? Yeah, it goes like Tower or Cook 4, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'll get it right now. We'll look here. We'll see what it is. It's 62 degrees and it's raining. Let's see what the extended is supposed to be. We're supposed to be cooler here, like um, in the. Yeah, we're supposed to have a good tournament, uh, 60s, 70s, uh, down to the 50s at night. So yeah, looks like actually. Yep. Looks like this. No week. rain really in the forecast early in the week. Yeah, look like night but. lows. Here's 48, 48, 51. Luke, what's that going to yeah. do? I mean, honestly, I like the I like August when we start to get these cool downs. Generally, get a little bit of a top water bite going. We get some fish to start to slide chat like really shallow again. So, I mean, I I like the conditions. August is my favorite my favorite month to fish up there. So, why is that? This fishing is generally really good. It's the lake's wide open pattern wise. Uh, both ends of the lake are good. Um, that's probably probably the biggest reason you get a lot of variety in the. The style of, of the like the get a lot of variety with where and what you can catch fish on up there. Sure. So you get a you get a bite of different stuff. Have you noticed? Let me ask you this. I mean, because um, on, in in other areas of the state, have you noticed like the fish up there reacting or actually biting on um, jerk bait stuff um, versus just the standard old bucktail topwater? So, yeah, I would say probably the last five years for me now, like we've caught, like we catch them on a really wide variety of uh, of baits at the end of the year. Like, so I kind of just look at like the big fish that we catch every year up there. And it's like, it's kind of really like the warmer years, you'll probably have a few more big ones on bucktails, but we're getting big ones on the class, you know, like all your classic rubber baits. We get the big ones on the blades, get big ones on top waters, but. I mean, we're getting, um, we get big ones every year on bar fighters, uh, the, like the drifter crack, that bait can be hot for big fish kind of periodically here and there. Like there'll be a, a big one mixed in on a glider. Um, sometimes your old AP lures. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, those sometimes we'll get a, I a still nice, love those mi- ripping a minnow bait or something. Stella, but, I mean, you haven't fished in so long. What do you have them hanging on your light cord so you can pull? <laughs> Uh, I have turn some the very light nice on. AP lures. I'm you sure. Night? I'm sure you do. Do you play fetch with them uh, yes. with the dog in the backyard? No, I'm not cruel to my dogs. My no. dogs love me. I'm sure they do. Well, hey, speaking of the croc, that's uh, that's a drifter tackle thing. Driftertackle.net. Um, croc is a. Explain what a croc is, Luke, because I think I mean that's kind of a hard thing. It's a weird, like, so it's a weird, like, I don't think I'll offend Ty by saying this, but, like, I don't know if that's, like, the worst best bait or the best worst bait. Nice. I I have also, I've also been described that way. (laughs) Yes, you have, by many people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Including family uh, members. It's, (laughs) I can can only imagine. Mm -hmm. Uh, No, I mean, it's kind of a weird, but you look at it, you like a, a like a, a diving riser chop bait like a suic but it's actually more like a glider and um it's just like sh- short little like six inch 10 10 inch poles and um the biggest trick with cracks and getting them to work and catch fish on them is you actually throw it on a really light rod um like a medium like a medium heavy type rod if you throw it on too stiff a rod it just it over it overworks the bait and it just blows out but if you throw it like i throw it on our uh our Thorn Brothers, our Heavy Predator, which is um, kind of more of a buckkill rod, and it's our Heavy Predator is, is pretty light. It's like uh, it's way on the light side of a heavy action rod, and um, that's that's what makes them come alive and work really well. If you throw it on a heavy action jerkbait rod and you rip the crap out of it, you're going to take the bait. Yeah, I think that's that's something I think people have done. And then also talk about a bar fighter. I never could get my bar to fight those baits. What are they supposed to do? Uh, I don't know. You give it short poles and long poles, and it starts, you know, it just 
darts right to left and has a nice belly flash to it. And I, I mean, I, I catch a lot of fish and a lot of big fish on those things every year. So I just, I mean, I just fish it like a classic dive and rise. I would say the only bit of, like, the only thing that's kind of a cool trick with those that I, I learned from Hammernick back in the day is, like, you just give it a little bit of slack before you pull it. And that just gets it like a little bit of a snap, and then you can really get like the belly flash out of them. But just like this, and the the two weights in the belly, like they just they have a lot of roll and a lot of flash in the water. Okay. Yeah, you reminded me of my uh, of my Amabama problem. Remember, Greg? Exactly. You were in Amabama, and Bama. In Miami didn't Bama, and then mm-hmm. you're like, let me see that, and he throws it out, gives it one hit, and like a forty incher inhales it. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> well. I stole my fish on my bait. Exactly. But, I mean, bar fighters, I know there was a, a craze over them and stuff. But, you know, I had probably four of those things. But I, I don't know. I couldn't get them to work. Or I, maybe they were working and I didn't know it. Um, yeah. cause, I would say you I don't, maybe just didn't give it a give it a good run at the time. But, um, but I couldn't like, get them to go down more than, like, two feet. Any of them. Yeah. That's, I, I don't even, I, I like, I don't know. Mine run, mine run nice. They'll got, they get out of sight. Like I'll hit bottom with them in, in six, eight feet of water with some of them. Yeah. So yeah. Um, the other, like, su- like, if you don't I mean, Suix are awesome too. So like the, I really like the 12 inch Suix with like the Franken Suix weight kit in them. Mm-hmm. Like those, those are awesome. So if, if your bar fighters aren't fighting, like uh, those will get the job done too. Well, mine are not fighting. I might have to have you give me a tutorial, <laughs> um, and I'm going to stand think, right beside you and just un- critique the whole thing. I think you're uncoachable. I don't think I'm going to put myself through that. But he is very, very uncoachable. until you <laughs> just get so frustrated that you have smoke coming yeah. out your ears. That <laughs> would make me so happy. Yeah, I've seen this guy freak out on Vermilion to the point where he was dry heaving off the back of the boat because he couldn't figure out the spot that we were on. Well, it was frustrating. Um, I was frustrated. But we got a 48 hooked in the tail. We did, and I also watched you yes. poop over the side of the boat. Yeah. And give me commentary. <laughs> I, I thought I had a world record, man. And that oh. wheel just started screaming, burn the shit out of my thumb trying to stop it. <laughs> You nope, know, you had one tail hooked. Oh, yeah, I thought I had jaws. Sorry, Brody. Oh, the dogs are asleep. Isn't that cute? Um, but uh, no. So, Jim, I tell you what. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what's coming up here next week? When can people sign up? When's the last time to sign up? Uh, so this weekend, they got to sign up by this weekend. So I need Luke to send in his uh, his registration form. You know, he's been telling me he wants to do it, but I thought I need ready. his info. Jim, I did this at the Chicago Muskie Show. No, you said you wanted to wait till the end. No, gave me my options, and I, I thought I mm-hmm. filled it. I know I filled it up, but I'll do it again. Yeah. yeah. Don't argue. Um, Don't argue. So, Jim is the yep, So we czar. have this. I, I am the final word on this. I'm kind of a big deal. I, I, I'm starting to figure yes. that. Yeah. He's, he's so yes. This weekend is the last time to sign up, so they got to sign up uh, by uh, Sunday night. Um, we still have openings available. It's going to be a, a nice size tournament. Um, it is a Friday Saturday tournament, so that's different than a lot of other tournaments. But uh, Minnesota regulations. Uh, because in between, you know, the summer months in between uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day, they do not allow you to have two weekend days for a tournament because they still want, you know, the tourists and the vacationers and all that to have their time on the water and not have it all taken over by tournaments. So it is a Friday-Saturday tournament. So with that, Jim, why don't you go over a little bit of the rules here for somebody if they're new they're sitting in Minnesota. They're right there. They're going through Sports Illustrated, looking under Vikings. Yeah. Why'd they trade Thielen? Yeah. Basically, and, if, if you follow the rules for fishing Vermilion in Minnesota, you'll be fine with the PMTT. We don't do anything special. We go by the rules of the states we're in. You know, So 
you control. Um, they allow one rod a person in Minnesota. So even if you're a solo team, you cannot have two rods. Minnesota does not allow that. So it would be one rod for trolling. Mm -hmm. Um, the only big rule that we have, uh, implemented in the last couple of years here is the live scan. Um, I know, you know, a lot of people like it. It's, it's a great tool, uh, especially if you know how to use it effectively, but we just feel for musky. It's just, it, it kind of creates an, you know, kind of an unfair situation for musky. It, it allows you to target them much easier than other fish. So we have just gotten rid of the live scan um, during tournament hours. Uh, so from the start of the tournament on Friday until the tournament ends on Saturday, you can still have it in your boat. You don't have to take it out or anything. You're just not allowed to use the live screen, the live scan screens on your graph. So, you know, that's the only real major rule that we have there. Well, what about, um, in this uh, in this tournament here, what are you? I mean, I, it, I, I'm sorry, I had to step away because the um, dog food was boiling. That's a whole other story. Um, the entry fee seven fifty. The entry fee is seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred. Oh my God, you're giving it seven hundred. Seven hundred dollars. Yep. Seven hundred. We raised it up this year a hundred dollars. Uh, hadn't raised it since like two thousand six. Um, but all that, that extra hundred dollars all went to payouts and that allowed us to go to 25,000 for first place with a full field. So for our 25th year, we decided that we'd go 25,000 mm, for first go. place. So 25, 25. Oh my God. Yep, Look so entry that. fee is, is 700, uh, for a two man team. So, you know, 350 a person, oh. they want to break it up. Oh my gosh, the math. The math coming yeah. from you. Just it's right there, man. So when are you differential equations, calculus, I can do it all. Oh Jesus. Where uh where are we um where's the tournament based out of? So tournament is based out of the landing, which is up on the west end. Mm -hmm. So if you've ever been up there, they've got a great place up there. They've got a little uh Thing down almost on the water like a pavilion and we're going to be outside there uh doing the whole thing the weather looks nice they're going to have a uh, bartender for us down there uh, will, thursday we'll have register what was that that'll be a nice place to have that tournament yeah 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 so thursday registration is from three to five and then we have our rules meeting at 5 p.m on thursday um at least one team member must attend the rules meeting. Uh, then the tournament hours are 7 to 4 on Friday and 7 to 1 on Sunday. On Friday at 5.30, we have another kind of get-together where we uh, bring the top 10 team up. And we don't really talk about what they were doing. We just kind of, you know, talk about the fish they caught and that stuff. And then on Saturday at 2.30, we'll do our awards ceremony where we hand out the trophies and then get more in-depth with the top 10 teams on what they actually did in that to catch. Hey, where, fish. where are we launching out of? So we have two takeoff locations. On the west end, it's going to be Wake em Up Bay, uh, the boat ramp there. Though there is limited parking because they have to allow slots for... You know, other people, we are only allowed to have less than like half of the slots for the PMTT guys. But you can launch anywhere. Yep. You just have to go to either of the two takeoff locations. And so on the up. west end, it's going to be Wake em Up Bay boat ramp. And on the east end, it's going to be the old uh, Bayview, um, which is now Tavern in the Bay restaurant. And yep. then the Bayview RV park I right there, they're docked. For the restaurant i think that that we're staying in a vrbo right there near that okay so that'll be good i mean i actually think we're like yeah. right next door yeah because uh, they've got they built the big rv park right there oh, nice. now where the old bayview resort used to be sure well yeah. how was uh 
Um, how you know for this one here, you know Vermilion's got the history of big fish and hating me and um, all you know satanic rituals. Um, mm-hmm. What uh, what's a little history on Vermilion in this PMT? So we have been there three times in the past. 2006 was our first time there, and then 2015. Those were both qualifiers. 2018, we did our mega. Um, that's that, you know, uh, we did that like every, I don't know, every like, at first it was like every 10 years, then kind of every five years. That was that big $80,000 tournament. Um, we haven't done a mega in a while, though, but maybe that's something we could look at again. But in the three times that we've been there, uh, we've caught a total of 117 fish. Uh, Ten of those fish were in the 50s, including the largest fish ever caught in a PMTT, which was 57 and a half inches. Caught there on Vermilion during the 2015 qualifier. And that fish only took 18th place. Imagine that. Well, that's... 57 and a half inches. He was by himself, too, Corey. So that fish was probably bigger because he couldn't pinch that tail. Who, who and not a fish that? that size. Corey calls. Oh, okay. So, Where, where's Corey from? Yeah. I don't have that in front of me, but I somewhere up there. I think maybe Minnesota or Wisconsin, isn't he? What's his I'm favorite sure. color? Oh, you, why don't you have Corey on the show? I can I tell would. you this stuff. You give me his phone number, I'll call him. Yes. Um, uh, he's requested that I not give you this. He's phone requested number. Radio Silence. No paparazzi. Yes. No paparazzi. Yes. So, but he actually uh, beat me out. Well, that's not hard. Because before that, I had the distinct pleasure of being the only PMTT angler to have ever caught a 50 inch fish and not be in the top 10. <laughs> I got a 50 you. and a half on St. Louis. And took 11th place. So I felt a lot better when he got a 57 and took 18th place and took away that dubious distinction from me. Oh, I'm sure. Luke, what yeah. uh, have you heard of any real giants this year? Uh, there was a 56-incher caught in, uh, like, maybe the second weekend of the season. Oh, wow. Is that uh, open water fish? I would, yeah, I would, I'm, a, I'm pretty sure it's a trolling fish. Um but uh, I'm trying to think, the the biggest we have out of there this year is a 52 and a half. I think Benson, I think Bob, the biggest one that I know of that one of my friends up there got is Bob guided like a 54 inch here a couple of weeks ago. Um, but there's been a lot of nice, a lot of nice fish, a lot of 50, 51, 52 inches getting caught. They may have some monsters in there, man. But like, I mean, these guys in the PMTT, they're all great sticks. So I'm expecting to have a very nice, nice fish catch. With some yeah, nice I would fish. We always get some nice fish up there. I would think numbers. I mean, it could it could be numbers wise similar to that because I fished that 2015 qualifier. I mean, that was that was really really good fishing. I mean, there's a an absolute pile of fish caught that first day, and yeah. Uh, I don't think we'll see quite the numbers of big fish like then, but I think we'll uh, I think we'll see some good numbers. There's a lot of like we're kind of in the third phase of uh, of management up there, and since 2017, we've had a lot of uh, had a, quite a few fish stocked compared to the previous like 14 years or whatever. And a lot of those fish are now in that like 30 to 40 inch range and. I'm, I'm guessing a lot of those are going to get caught. So I think we'll see some pretty good numbers. Yeah. The and I just like the fact that our anglers come from all over the place. And, you know, some of them don't really fish for a million. And, you know, they're not, you know, shy about trying something that works for them somewhere else and bringing that to Vermilion. And, you know, and then that stuff pays off a lot of times, too. So that's oh, one yeah. of the good things about the tournaments, you know. They call it the curse of the locals because very few times do the locals, you know, actually come out and dominate and win. Oh, so. Luke's going to come in there. He's going to have his chest out. Uh, Luke? Yeah. yeah, Luke needs to to do that. What did you in 15? Were you third place or something like that, right? No, uh, we were like 11th or 12th or something. Were you, I thought you were higher than that. 
Was it your Mega that you were hired? No, no, the Mega was uh, the Mega didn't go so well. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Why didn't it go so man. well, Luke? Why yeah, did Little Man is his partner? That boat. We did not boat any muskies. That was a, that was a problem. Yes. Oh. You, had to catch, you had to catch a muskie to fish the last day, and we uh, we failed to do that. Well, that sucks. But uh. hey, that's that's muskie tournaments, right? And there you go. But it was messing combers that you came in. Was it yeah, we, second? Like, or? Yeah, and then way back in the day, CJ and I got well, we had we got a fifty three and a fifty five incher in one of the Hartmans and got like second place. 53 and a 55, and you get second place. Yeah, that second. just tells you the kind of fishery that is, man. Yeah, that's pretty. There's some some pretty amazing things. Happen. I would, like I said, I'm I'm excited. I think it's going to be really good. I think there'll be good numbers. And you're always excited. It'll be a fun tournament. I'm excited to see the new medicated Greg Thomas on Lake Vermilion. I, I don't think. I've... <laughs> No promises. I have never met somebody who hates a lake as much as he. Hey, I still, I still have the, Vermilion. I still have the best PMTT acceptance speech at a tournament. Yeah. Uh, from, was it getting the truck and following me out of here or something? Yeah, I go. All you're gonna see is my tail lights. Let's move this thing along. <laughs> where was where was that at? Vermilion. That was 2006 too. He caught a fish. No, no, I think he catches a fish every time he's up there too. But he hates. I don't. We did a week up there, and I imagine being with him for a week for oh, the we, school on Musky Road Rules. You most, were, most people call yeah, that. Yeah, Luke gift. was there. You were one of the the guys that came up talking. That's that a gift. Road Rules School. That's a gift. Uh, yeah. is what that is. Um, don't be uh, don't be jealous. Uh, I got attacked by a bat. Yes, you did. Coming out of the kitchen. Tony was swinging a broom at your head. You made me guide a deaf guy. <laughs> well, for, Luke, Luke, had, uh, Luke had three days with um, some friends from Iowa, didn't you, Luke? Yeah, we, yep, we sure did. How was, how was uh, um, the English? Uh, those, uh, those guys are... It's, pretty it's pretty good i would say it's a lot like guiding the guiding the guys from, like they speak pretty pretty good broken english like this um, like guiding some of the swedes yeah yep exactly like they uh they're very good at communicating but like but fishing with the japanese is awesome though they are if you think i have a good attitude you should meet some of these guys no, i would hate them it's <laughs> when you when you catch a muskie it is like the greatest experience of their life it's pretty awesome Oh yeah, did you do sake That's bombs? That's gonna be cool. What's that? Did you do sake bombs in the boat? No, no, no. They, uh, I think they forgot their sake. Like I don't think they brought any of the brought any of the flag. Did you touch oh, bellies? Greg would be upset there. That's one of Greg's favorite drinks. Oh, He's warm sake. I love sake. That stuff. And but sake doesn't like you. It does not. But I enjoy no. it a lot. Hey, are yes. our friends good at drinking? Huh. I said, are any of our friends good at drinking? No. I'm getting my drink on right now, man. I'm Stella is. But Stella's one nope. of those guys that he's like drinking. I what? got a cigar. I got some dab German beer and uh, some nice 20 year Graham's Tawny Port to go yeah. with my cigar. Oh, my you God. Never, you never get out of control. Greg, Greg is out of control now. I do not. Greg is always out of control. I do not. I have a. Occasional beer, and I take my shirt off and yell at people. I still remember my favorite Greg Thomas story. What? Um, I was at a fishing show, a regular fishing show, and the only other musky guy I knew there was Herbie. And so every night, Herbie and I would sit in a bar talking about things, and we got on to talking about Thomas. Oh, God. And about how crazy he can be. And I'm like, you know... He just needs to get on some medication. You know, they can medicate him. They can bring him under control. It's like we're trying to control and, a cow. Yes. And Herbie says, yes, but then Greg wouldn't be Greg. Exactly. See, then I would be no fun. <laughs> so Herbie, Herbie knew you. Isn't that right, I think Luke? I, my favorite Greg Thomas drinking story was like the first. 
I think the first sports show I ever worked for uh, when we bought Musky Buster, I, like Kelsey and I, we weren't even old enough to drink. I and wasn't so either. We're, yeah, so we're uh, we yeah, because he's Milwaukee. your age too. I think it was the Milwaukee Milwaukee Musky Show, and uh, I can't. We were like her and I were just up like making lures and probably because we were freaking always always behind messing around with something and we ordered some pizza like at midnight and I had to go down to the front desk or went down to get the pizza <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden here comes Greg just like wandering down the hallway and I don't know I can't remember who did it to you but you must have like passed out and then somebody got after you with like a Nancy Eldrup Nancy Eldrup yeah. yes painted him up like a little Indian boy and he walks around, he turns the corner and like goes to the front desk and the lady just looks at him and is like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I I didn't know that that's not how you act in Milwaukee. I just assumed that's how people all went around. I was yeah. I was just saying hi to her as I had. Yeah, he didn't, he's walking around not even knowing that he's painted up. Oh, no. He doesn't have his shirt on. I think he was like in his underwear. I was like, I was like, Kelsey, I think. I think that's Greg Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I love to get. That's how I like to meet people wearing a shoe as a hat. That's uh, when you used to have that little red truck with the white stripe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was that? Like a Datsun or something? I don't know. It was probably no, big... no. Luke had it. Luke had little you, red. You had a little little red truck with a white stripe. You had a Dodge, right? Little red Dodge. <laughs> yeah, it was a. That was a, a great truck for a 20 year old. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that thing was four wheel drive. Uh, I know it went over things. Who's, it probably whose shook wedding it. were we at that we had to have you like jump over the back fence to get you into the bars because you were underage? Me? No. Uh, Luke. At oh, somebody's wedding. I don't I got pulled in. They, had, in they had like a fence in the back of the outside bar. At Milwaukee, I uh, uh, Tony pulled me through the window uh, yeah. to get in the bar there. I remember that. So. Are you are you and Luke the same age, or are you a year older, Greg? He's like three months older. Than me, yeah, no, we're oh, basically okay. So you guys are right around the same, the same age. Uh, you guys make me feel old that I knew both of you before you could even drink. Ugh. Well, you, you should. Know, you know what a funny a funny age thing was was like so all of us hung around and like chad like chad kane and, and ty and like i knew that ty was a few years older than us but like i always thought chad was like exactly our age or even like two years younger right so then one night like at two in the morning we we're just like talking and he, he like mentions his age i was like no way like you're not eight years older than me he's like no i am i'm like no no way I literally made him get his driver's license on. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm five years older than him. Are you really? God ordered. I, I I turned double nickel this summer. No oh. shit. Will you? Are you fit? You should catch a double nickel. I should. Oh my god! You are God. I know. It's, I know. It's old, someone would guide me to one. I know old people. All right, so let's 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 finish this up here, guys. Lake Vermilion, Stella. When can be the last day somebody could sign up? Do you have to be like uh, uh, Sunday and then Monday uh, if it's in the mail? Sunday or Monday? Because <laughs> yeah. like Tim will go to the PO box on Monday morning, so if there's stuff Monday morning in the PO box, we'll still put you in. All right. Well. Good deal. Lucas, you got anybody you want to plug or, or or anything? No, I would say um we just got done with that that Daiwa product testing and um and uh product development deal up on the Lake of the Woods there and um got to see some some new stuff coming for reels that are pretty awesome and uh we were playing around with those um those uh the Nashini, the Daiwa Bessie lures is kind of a spy bait. Um and those are really cool. And then obviously the uh Thorn Brothers uh our new stealth liner rods are awesome. That's what I've been fishing all this year. Got the test those last year. They're um very nice. The uh our probably like the flagship rod in the stealth line is the heavy action. It's 
um, like a true heavy action rod. It's more, um, kind of more in line falls right in between like the, the extra heavy predator and then the, the heavy predator is a really cool rod. You can do a wide variety of that. Um, it, it, they are 10 foot one piece blanks and, uh, they're very lightweight, have a great action. Um, check those out. We have some really cool, uh, wind foregrips and wind rear grips for those. And, uh, we can do the, we have kind of a stock, a stock color pattern. Like you can just come into the store and, uh, and just buy one right out off the shelf or else we can, um, we can write you up and do custom colors, put your name on it, trim bands, the whole works, but check those That's out. Cool. Um, you got to yell at Ben. I thought for sure I'd see Ben and Andy as isn't Andy, uh, Vermilion, Andy's Lake. Andy Ham, uh, Andy, yeah. Andy's lakes, wherever he decides to go fishing. But he always, he would always ask me every year, are you going to do Vermilion? You're going to do Vermilion. And yeah, I, I don't know. I they don't did leech last year. I'm surprised they didn't sign up this year. They they might. You never know. They, hey, maybe the check's in the mail. Hey, hey you got to do it by Sunday. Yeah. Monday morning at the P.O. box. He might be walking it down yeah. there right now. You don't know. You don't know his life. <laughs> he might be on a rascal, just a driving down 94. Uh, no, I could be. This is going to be an entertaining, entertaining week and an entertaining tournament. I'm looking forward to this. This is this will be a good time. Yeah, I haven't seen you since uh, March. Yeah, it's been it's been a minute. Well, I'm glad Luke got to see me this week. He was it was a really nice reunion. He was missing se- you for seven minutes on the dock. I could tell he. I could tell he. I could tell he was done already, and he wanted to leave. It, it was like some things just never change. <laughs> yeah. He just he needed like the old Batman from the old Batman cartoons, the anti shark spray. That's what I felt like he was getting ready to spray me with. <laughs> I just go I just back laugh. home. It's just. I mean, it's just like how 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 things have changed in the last twenty years. It's like I. I'm like literally. I know you grew up and became an adult, and well, yeah, kids and not, everything, man. Not only that, Greg Thomas is pulling up to a resort on Lake of the Woods to pick up his the guide for the day. Like that, I, it just almost like a bad dream. <laughs> Lucas, this is you're spreading rumors. Um, all right, well, guys. Check out muskyhunter.com. Make sure you check out muskyroadrules.com. We'll put up new dates and stuff for schools and clinics this winter. Also, go to promuskie.com. So if you want to fill out, print out the form there. Jim Stella would love to see your smiling face this weekend, I'm sure. And you could, yes. see, you could see Jim. Anybody that sees Jim, feel, uh, feel free um, to call him any four-letter word you want. He enjoys it. So, and also, for our, right before I got the Lunge and Lures text line, make sure you text Tony. Tony needs a text um, or a picture, you know, whatever. Uh, How is Tony? Tony's great. I mean, picture of health. I mean, that man, uh, he's... Uh, I talked to him last. He was in Florida. Well, that's probably about right. I don't know where he's at. I think he's in Cincinnati right now uh, with the grandson. So, But I, I know he's leaving on... Sunday to go up to Vermilion. They're staying at the casino. Um, but do our Lunge and Lures text line 606 776 6570. Again, 606 776 6570. Lunge and Lures, Lunge and Tons of baits, crank baits, spinners, all they got. Um, new the uh, Alley Cat series of baits. Make sure you check that out. Guys, I am. Glad to get a hold of you all finally. We got this done. And, uh, yeah, you guys have a good weekend, and I'll talk to you. Hell, I'll see you next week. I can go back to getting my drink on. Nice. Sounds good. We'll, uh, we'll see you guys next week. Have a good night. All right. Say hi to Kelsey for me, Luke. We'll do it. We'll see you guys. See you, buddy. All right, bye.